It didn't change anything. It had nothing to do with it. I thought it was... I thought it was important because, one, that was that was part of the true story, and second, it, it revealed something about him. This was a person who was outside of conventional mores, and he didn't have the same ethnic and religious ties that someone who's a wasp or a, even a Roman Catholic would have. So it's just like Jews I know in porn or in, in Hollywood. They, they can only do porn and they can only do like the really out there Hollywood stuff because they don't have traditional ties. So people with connections to family, to an ethnic group, or to a religion, um, they're much more restricted in the types of things they can do. But because he didn't have traditional ties, because he was rootless cosmopolitan assimilated Jew, he was able to do things that normal people cannot do. So he was able to like engage in really shady business and seduce schoolgirls while he was married. And he, he just gave away the movie. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! And he wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to do that if he was uh, a normal person. So I think ties are really important if you don't have ties, and particularly like there's like a substantial proportion of Jews who feel substantial, I don't know, maybe 10% of American Jews who feel no loyalty to the greater, wider society. Like, it's like, they feel no loyalty to the Jewish society either, but they're just like rootless, cut off from their roots, cosmopolitan, like, um... Give me an example. Well, Jews in porn and Jews in Hollywood. Uh, generally speaking, they're not active in Jewish life. Okay, but but let, let, let's take a guy like you know, like a Steven Spielberg, right, or David he, Geffen. He, the, these they're, people they're Jewish. are they're, and that they have they have they some feel Jewish like, ties. They feel like you know they've got to. Spielberg had a bar mitzvah to Beth Jacob. You know, and they feel like they've got to give, but it's not just that. It's like they got to have some part of political whatever, and they right, give like a right, ton of money to, right, right, to right. these. They're candidates. involved in wider society. Right, but, but uh, there is. I don't know, about 10% of the Jews I've met, they, they don't feel any loyalty to the United States. They don't okay. feel any loyalty to anything Jewish. Uh, they, they don't feel like they owe society anything. And they will cheat, steal, sleep with as many people as they can. They'll just do whatever they want because they don't feel they have any ties to any any other group. They just do their own things. I'm Jewish, I'm, but I don't know, you know, I, I'm not I'm not religious and I'm not I don't care about Israel. I don't care about the United States. I don't care about California or Los Angeles. I don't care about you know Protestantism or Catholicism. All I care about is making money. And, or whatever it is they're into. It may be right. surfing, maybe making porn, it may be dealing drugs, it may be pursuing their writing. It may be whatever they're into, but they feel no greater obligations. Like Jews who, who are cut off from their relationships with the Jewish community um, and also don't care about the wider society have, have no ties. And therefore they're freer to engage in behavior that most normal people would not engage in. So like Jews in Weimar, the Weimar Republic in the 1920s, like secular rootless Jews who had no ties to the Jewish community. And where? In the Weimar Republic in Germany in the 1920s. Like they were leading the way with satire, making fun of traditional German values. They were leading the way in like avant-garde theater and film. And they were just like constantly making fun of the wider society's values and traditions and ties. Because people who don't have ties and traditions, they hate people who do have ties and traditions. So like I, I dated this girl who was raised Orthodox but then left it, hates Orthodox Judaism, hates Judaism, and she also hates Christmas, she hates like Christians who are rooted to their Christianity, she hates traditional ties, and so she just like makes fun of them, and like just thinks it's disgusting. So like this, many of the secular Jews in the Weimar Republic in 1920s Germany were just like crapping on traditional German values, and were just leading the way with very biting, cutting edge satire, and they provoked this reaction called National Socialism, aka Nazi. And there were also a lot of, like, Jews in, uh, what's that really radical uh, legal organization that like, yeah, claims uh, to stand up for liberty? But yeah, yeah, uh, the ACLU. The ACLU, like, ACLU Jews tend to have 
very few ties to anything Jewish. Oh, they yeah. don't have ties to any form of Christianity either. They they don't have ties, and so they want to make the world, and they want to make the United States, you know, as rootless as they are. And so they like assault traditional ties and traditional values. Um, most most Jews who like write for the New York Times, they're not. They have nothing to do with Jewish life. They they hate Christians who identify with their Christianity. They hate Orthodox Jews. They so they their whole agenda is just like crapping on traditional ties, and they're able to do it because they don't have any traditional ties of their own. Like most of what constrains us is not necessarily our intellectual beliefs, but what are our ties? What do you think? That makes sense. I think they also want to assimilate. Yeah. They want to blend in. And yeah, not and they don't like people who stick out. You know, yeah. or you're too Jewish, or you're too Christian. Yeah, and they feel terribly insecure about their own Jewishness. And it's often the, these same type of people who I bump into, and they have to come up and let me know that they're a Jew. Right. I, you don't know how many times I like go in the market, and and like, I'm like a wax paper for these flies, and they come up to me, and they will somehow hint to me that they're a Jew. Right. They'll say, Rabbi, did you know that my great grandfather, you know, came from Europe and he wore a yarmulke like you do? And I'm like, okay, I. Why are you telling me this? You know? And I, I get that all the time. Yeah. And welcome back to Torah Talk at 62 degrees in Pico Robinson. The traffic is hot and heavy on Pico and Robinson Boulevards. In Judaism, you cannot lead a religious life alone. You need community. And this week's Torah portion is, in large part, creating the rituals that make for community. And creating the, the, the Mishkan, the, the, the holy tabernacle, the mobile tabernacle, and uh, Torah is all about creating community, you can't do it on your own in Judaism. You can have a relationship with Jesus Christ on your own, but you can't do the Jewish thing on your own. You can, but you're, it's... It sucks. It, Look at Rob's. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you can, here, here, here's, I don't know if this is a true for Christianity. I don't mm -hmm. know if this is true for Christianity, because mm -hmm. you brought it up. I don't know. But I know it's true for Judaism. Mm -hmm. Judaism is a religion designed up and down for married people. And yeah. if you're never going to be married, this is not going to work for you. Yeah. It's like it's just not. It's like going down a one-way street, and you're going the wrong way. Because mm -hmm. it's all about being married, right? And mm -hmm. right now you're single, like you're thinking, okay, it's not so bad. But if you like are still single 15 years from now, you're going to really despise this. Yep. Okay. We have more spiritual people than ever before. and People want to build their own mishkabs to God. It's like, oh, I don't need the Torah with all these directions and instructions. I just like going to nature and I connect to, I connect to the Great Spirit by meditating and doing yoga. That's because you hang out with them. That's why you know about them. Well, some of them are hot. Oh, well. <laughs> So this new Jewish religion thing in the Torah it burns rams and bulls, which were gods in Egypt. It would be like burning the Academy Awards in Los Angeles in front of a bunch of actors. I don't understand that. Well, when when the Torah says, you know, sacrifice a ram and sacrifice bulls, these were gods to surrounding cultures. Oh. So, like, the Torah is saying rams and bulls aren't God, only God is God. And we're going to burn your gods. So that's why people hate Jews, because we we deny their gods. I was in an Academy Award winning movie. Yeah, you mentioned that. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Congratulations on Mazel Tov. Thank you. I appreciate that. You can't perpetuate values without rituals. So Jews would say, oh, you know, I keep Jewish values, but I don't worry about Jewish laws. I'm not really keeping Jewish values, because Jewish values are Jewish rituals. And Jewish exactly. Laws. Why is Africa such a wasteland? Like, why are they so primitive and backward there? Are they? I don't know. Like, you'd think they would have, like, developed something, but all they developed were, like, tyrannies. And when was the last piece of, like, great technology invented it by Africa? They have the components for the technology, like all the uranium and the Yeah, plutonium. but, I mean, they didn't do anything the to deserve that. That's just there, but they're not, like, 
building ICQ chat or 